The story of De Grove Petercum begins in 1871 at the Brussels Stock Exchange. Franz Philipson is 20 years old. The Franco-German War has just ended. The French are selling securities to finance the war reparations and cities are having a hard time financing their infrastructure works. Franz Philipson starts off in arbitrage. He sends transaction orders to counterparties based in London, Paris and Frankfurt. Bonk Philipson then specializes in the issuance of city bonds. In 1886, Franz Philipson stages a big achievement, the conversion of the debt of the city of Brussels. Two years later, he buys the bank's main office, located on Rue Guimard, at the heart of the business district. He sets up several industrial businesses. His company, Chemin de Fer Secondaire, which builds tramway and railroad networks all over the world, is a big success. During the interbellum, Bank Philipson is managed by the sons of Franz Philipson, Jules and Maurice, and plays a role in major public loan issuances, the stabilization of the Belgian franc, and the privatization of the Belgian railways. In 1940, Germany invades Belgium, and the Philipson family is forced to flee the country. Fortunately, two partners keep things running. One of them is Jean de Grof, who started off at Bank Philipson as an office boy and progressively became the trusted confidant of the Philipson family. He becomes a partner and later on the largest shareholder. The bank then changes its name to Bank de Grof. The liberation of Belgium is marked by the infamous Gut operation. All movable assets have to be declared. The bank expands its wealth management business and remains a very active stock market participant. In 1955, it oversees 8% of all stock market transactions. The history of De Grove Petercom is also the making of the stockbrokers Leon Libert and Emile van Kampenhout. Leon Libert, born in 1888, works as an accountant in a metal construction workshop when he decides to try his luck as a stockbroker at the age of 21. In the 1920s, the Belgians discover inflation for the first time. The stock exchange becomes a safe haven to protect one's money against monetary erosion. Emile von Kampenhout is a stockbroker since 1927. In 1934, Lucien Peterbroek, Leon Libert's son-in-law, starts to work with him. After the Great Depression of the 1930s, confidence in the markets has to be restored. There are laws reforming the profession of stockbroker, and from then on, only people with a college degree or equivalent are eligible for the profession. The government reinforces the protection of savings and orders that hybrid banks be split into holdings on the one hand and savings banks on the other. The Brussels Stock Exchange is sputtering when in 1966, a number of bold and prescient stockbrokers suggest to the financial regulators to deeply reform the profession. Among them, Jean Peterbroek and Etienne and Emmanuel van Kampenhout. Peterbroek is specialized in private banking whereas van Kampenhout is an expert in currency trading, international arbitrage, and relations with institutional investors. In April 1968, they set up the limited partnership Peter Brook, van Kampenhout & Company, soon known under the abridged name of Petercom. The team takes office at Place saint cudul and rapidly Petercom welcomes new partners. In 1982, Etienne van Kampenhout provided the inspiration for the decree Cormann de Klerk. This decree revives the stock market by granting tax benefits to new issues and to the purchase of shares. Two years later, Bank de Groof is the first to take a new company public. Its name is Gottdor. Just like Petercom, it would come to specialize in IPOs. After launching the Luxembourg offices in 1985 and 1987, the bank opens branches in France, Switzerland, Spain, Italy and Germany. In 1990, the Maestad law allows banks to enter into the capital of brokerage firms. Bank de Grof seizes this opportunity and sets up its own brokerage firm. In the aftermath, Jean Peterbroek launches the Bell 20 Index as president of the Brussels Stock Exchange. A few years later, Petercom handles the sale of Caisse Générale d'Épargne et de Retraite to Fortis, marking the first successful privatization in Belgium. Investment products continue to evolve. De Grof is a pioneer in terms of rates, in particular through its stake in Coffinimo. Petercom, in turn, focuses on equity derivatives. At the onset of European Monetary Union in 2001, 
the banking industry booms. Through a successful takeover policy, both Petercom and De Grove significantly expand their network in Belgium. In 2015, two companies with very similar activities merge, and De Grove Petercom is born. The capital remains in the hands of the historical family shareholders, who share the same vision, achieving ambitious and sustainable growth in an ever more complex and international environment. <laughs>